Welcome back, welcome back, any and all. Glad you all could come back to hear the word. Not only hear the word, but be doers of the word. Glory be to a higher. I sure hope when you woke up this morning, you told Father God, thank you. It is he that woke us up. We didn't wake ourselves up. No, we can't do that. We can't even breathe on our own, believe it or not. And I sure hope you told your loved ones that you love them. We're not promised tomorrow, not even the rest of this day. Today, we're still in the book of Matthew. We're on chapter 12, a question about the Sabbath. I sure hope you guys, hallelujah, are reading God's word, preferably the King James Version of the Bible, going down on your knees in prayer, crying out to the Father in sincerity and truth. Hallelujah. That's the only way to go about it. You've got to cry out to him. And you go down on your knees in prayer and cry out to him in sincerity and truth so he can hear your cries. Not only that, if you cry out, he knows your heart. He will answer you. Not only that, he'll begin to teach you the word of God. He's teaching me. He has begun to teach me years ago, and he's continued to teach me, and I'm continuously learning. I'm just grateful, ever so grateful. Giving my life to Christ was the best thing that ever happened to me. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You won't regret it. If you haven't given your life to Christ, I don't know what you're waiting for. And we live a life of daily repentance because we live in these fleshly bodies, and the flesh is always warring with the spirit, right? Until we get our immortal bodies, hallelujah, which will change, in a, which will turn in a, you know, Blank of a second, it's going to happen. So, right now, we got to live. And we got to keep on trying to win souls to Christ Jesus. Because that's what it's about. You know? I always, I love you all with the love of the Lord. And that's why I tell you the truth. And Father God loves you more. He loves us also very much. He wants a personal relationship with each and every one of us. Each and every one of us. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We are blessed. And um, we're going to say a prayer for children of all ages. And we're going to begin our reading. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, we come to you today to say thank you. Thank you, my Father, for this day. Thank you for every day. Thank you, Father, for your love. Thank you for the peace of mind. <laughs> thank you, Father, for giving us spirits that love us and train us up by your word. Thank you, Father, for loving us. And Father, thank you for teaching us to treat others the way that we want to be treated with love and respect. We love you, my Father. It's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Amen. Amen indeed. Amen. That's right. Amen. All right. Matthew chapter 12. A question about the Sabbath. One Sabbath, Jesus and his disciples were walking through some wheat, some wheat fields. His disciples were hungry and began picking and eating grains of wheat. Some Pharisees noticed this and said to Jesus, why are your disciples picking grain on the Sabbath? They are not supposed to do that. Jesus answered, You surely must have read what David did when he and his followers were hungry. He went into the house of God, and then they ate the sacred loaves of bread that only priests are supposed to eat. Haven't you read in the law of Moses that the priests are allowed the priests are allowed to work in the temple on the Sabbath? But no one says that they are guilty of breaking the law of the Sabbath. I tell you that there is something here greater than the temple. Don't you know what the scriptures mean when, when they say, instead of offering sacrifices to me, I want you to be merciful to others? If you knew what this means, you would not condemn these innocent disciples of mine. So the man of the, so the man, oh sorry, so the son of man is Lord over the Sabbath. I'm going to say it again. So the Son of Man is Lord over the Sabbath. Aren't you glad? Aren't you guys glad that we don't edit anything? You got to see the real deal. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, glory. Errors and all. We are blessed, aren't we? Hallelujah. A man with a crippled hand. Jesus left and went into one of the Jewish meeting places where there was a man whose hand was crippled. Some Pharisees wanted to accuse Jesus of doing something wrong, and they asked him, Is it right to heal someone on the Sabbath? Jesus answered, if you had a sheep that fell into a ditch on the Sabbath, wouldn't you lift it out? People are worth much more than sheep, and so it is right to do good on the Sabbath. Then Jesus told the man, hold out your hand. The man did, and it became as healthy as the other one. The Pharisees left and started making plans to kill Jesus, God's chosen servant. When Jesus found out what was happening, he left there, and large crowds followed him. He healed all of their sick but warned them not to tell anyone about him. So God's promise came true, just as Isaiah the prophet had said. Here is my chosen servant. I love him, and he pleases me. I will give him my spirit, and he will bring justice to the nations. He won't shout or yell or call out in the streets. He won't break off a bent reed or put out a dying flame. 
but he will make sure that justice is done. All nations will place their hope in him. Jesus and the ruler of the demons. Some people were brought to Jesus a man who was blind and could not talk because he had a demon in him. Jesus healed the man and then he was able to talk and see. The crowds were so amazed that they asked, could Jesus be the son of David? When the Pharisees heard this, they said, he forces out demons by the power of Beelzebul, the ruler of the demons. Jesus knew what they were thinking and he said to them, any kingdom where people fight each other will end up ruined. And the town or family that fights will soon destroy itself. So if Satan fights against himself, how can his kingdom last? If I use the power of Beelzebub to force out demons, whose power do your own followers use to force them out? Your followers are the ones who will judge you. But when I force out demons by the power of God's spirit, it proves that God's kingdom has already come to you. How can anyone break into a strong man's house and steal his things unless he first ties up the strong man? Then he can take everything. If you are not on my side, you are against me. If you don't gather in the, in the harvest with me, you scatter it. I tell you that any sinful thing you do or say can be forgiven. Even if you speak against the Son of Man, you can be forgiven. But if you speak against the Holy Spirit, you can never be forgiven, either in this life or in the life to come. A tree and its fruit. A good tree produces only good fruit, and a bad tree produces bad fruit. You can tell what a tree is like by the fruit it produces. You are a bunch of evil snakes. So how can you say anything good? Your words show what is in your hearts. Good people bring good things out of their hearts, but evil people bring evil things out of their hearts. I promise you that on the day of judgment, everyone will have to account for every careless word they have spoken. On that day, they will be told that they are either innocent or guilty because of the things they have said. A sign from heaven. Some Pharisees and teachers of the law of Moses said, Teacher, we want you to show us a sign from heaven. But Jesus replied, You want a sign because you are evil and won't believe. But the only sign you will get is the sign of the prophet Jonah. He was in the stomach of a big fish for three days and nights, just as the Son of Man will be, will be deep in the earth for three days and nights. On the day of judgment, the people of Nineveh will stand there with you and condemn you. They turned to God when Jonah, speak, when Jonah preached, and yet here is something far greater than Jonah. The queen of the south will also stand there with you and condemn you. She traveled a long way to hear Solomon's wisdom, and yet here is something much greater than Solomon. Return of an evil spirit. When an evil spirit leaves a person, it travels through the desert, looking for a place to rest. But when the demon doesn't find a place, it says, I will go back to the home I left. When he gets there and finds the place empty, clean, and fixed up, it goes off and finds seven other evil spirits even worse than itself. They all come and make their home there, and the person ends up in worse shape than before. That's how it will be with you evil people of today. <laughs> Jesus' mother and brothers. While Jesus was still speaking to the crowds, his mother and brothers came and stood outside because they wanted to talk with him. Someone told Jesus, your mother and brothers are standing outside and want to talk with you. Jesus answered, who is my mother and who are my brothers? Then he pointed to his disciples and said, these are my mother and my brothers. Anyone who obeys my father in heaven is my brother or sister or mother. Well, God's willing on Monday, we'll come back still in the book of Matthew chapter 13, a story about a farmer. You all tell your loved ones that you love them when I promise tomorrow, not even the rest of this day. Tell them all about Father God who gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for all our sins. He didn't die for one of some. He died for us all. And if you haven't given your life to Christ Jesus, what are you waiting for? Nobody else died for our sins. Choose ye this day whom you're going to serve. You can't serve two masters. You can't serve uh, God and uh, money either. You hear me? God and man. You can't serve God and man either. You, ha you have to choose. Okay? Either like the Lord says, either you for him or you're not. You for him or you're against him. Okay? There's not going to be any sidelines where you can be lukewarm. No. Like the Lord said, if you're lukewarm, he's going to spit you out his mouth. You better choose. Okay? And don't wait and think you got a lot of time because you don't. We're living in the last days. I only tell you the truth because I love you. And Father God loves you more. Right?
Father God says, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's something you must do. We all must do it. There's no ifs, ands, and buts about it. And if you have any unforgiveness in your hearts, you better let it go. Because if you want your Father in heaven to forgive you for your sins and your transgressions, you better forgive your fellow man. I don't care who he or she is or what they've done. No matter what they've done, you better forgive them. Or the Father in heaven not going to forgive you. Not only that, your prayers may be hindered. And you wonder why. Anyway, you all have yourself a beautiful, blessed day. All children of all ages, from youngest to oldest alike, God bless you. And not just a beautiful, blessed day, a beautiful, blessed weekend. And be careful out there. Stay on your toes. All right? I love you all to love the Lord. That's why I tell you the truth. And Father God loves you more. You'll have yourself a beautiful, blessed day. Children of all ages, from youngest to oldest alike. God bless you. Bye-bye.